Hey, my friends, it's your buddy Keith here again at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in England. And we've got one of the most rare and exciting guitars we have ever had here. You know we like ESPs, and this is uh, arguably the most sought-after ESP ever made. It's the very first James Hetfield JH1 Metallica Signature Guitar. These came out in 1996. They only made 200 of them. I couldn't tell you how many still exist, but you only see one come up for sale every one or two years. That They are very hard to find. We got this one out of Scotland, believe it or not, and it's one of the most counterfeited and faked guitars in the world. There's multiple websites dedicated just to faking this guitar. Uh, rareelectricguitars.com I think is one. There's jameshetfieldguitars.com is another one. You can just go on Alibaba to get the typical Chipson Chinese fake knockoffs. And there's varying degrees of quality, but there are features that we can look at here on the real one that just have not been uh, replicated by the counterfeiters and the fakes. It's just too hard to do, or they don't get it quite right, or they just use a different design entirely because of uh, materials costs. But let's talk about some of these features that tell you a real one from the fake. So you've got your input jack here, and your strap button there. On, on the, uh, the fakes, usually it won't have an input jack going into the body. You'll just have a cheap little box, little square, and it just goes dink in like that. Uh, strap buttons are also in really weird places on the fakes and the counterfeits. They're not where they're supposed to be here, and they're not where they are on the back either. Um, the paint, I don't want to give it away. Uh, I'm kind of debating on how much to show because I really don't want the counterfeiters who are inevitably going to be watching this to see some of the details. I'd rather have you guys just shoot me a message if you're genuinely... Uh, worried about a fake or, or a real one. But let's just say that the the black is not a solid, perfect black. There's some features in it that uh, um, stand out, and the fakes are just a flat black. Um, you know, but that's not the case with the real one. Other things you can see, like the, the bridge. See this little kind of pitting on the bridge? Very common for a true 1996 uh, Japanese ESP. That's a telltale sign. There's others. Um, truss rod cover is the proper bullet style with the, uh, with the edge that, that bevels off there, so that's good to know. The Ninja Star inlay. Obviously, it's abalone. It's very intricate. On the fakes, sometimes it's just this outer shape with nothing on the inside, but it's that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, the back can tell us a lot of stuff too. Most importantly, the neck plate. All right, I've got the back cover off because I wanted to show you the control cavity. This is another dead giveaway for a real versus a fake. So there's the cover. On real ESPs, when you, take the, when you take the cover off, they all look like this. They all kind of look like graphite that's been sc scratched up a bit. And everything's nice and smooth. All the cuts, like all, all of the edges are smooth. Um, and it's just really well done. On the fakes, it looks like hell in there, you know? And it doesn't, I'm just going around here. It's not that clean. Now here on the pot, you can see quite clearly, made in Japan. This is what it's supposed to look like. And here on the neck plate, that's, that's the big thing that no one's ever got right. So on the fakes, a lot of times this screw will actually be the strap button on the fakes. But, or and it will just have a, a, a plain black square neck plate. But actually, see, it's curved and goes in line with this curve right here. And you can see, you got some fingerprints on there for me. It's number 90. 
And if you're wondering why aren't those numbers perfectly straight or whatever, it's because you're doing a custom serial number. So anytime you change the, the tooling on a machine or to do something as a kind of a one-off, it's, it's not worth the expense of going and, and recalibrating and retooling an entire uh, machine that's going to be used for just a, a limited run. It's generally the reason why. Uh, other good signs are look at these screws. See the kind of corrosion on them? Again, lots of ESPs from this era with bolt-on necks. That's exactly what the screws look like. On all of mine from this era, that kind of patina and corrosion, you, you just can't fake that. that that's, that's materials. It's got to be the right material, and it's time. And it's really hard to fake time. On the neck here, you can see the shape, very distinct at the heel, very distinct. And then you've got a volute here, or volute, I don't know how you pronounce that word. The custom shop logo. Now again, I, there's something special about the logo that I'm a little bit hesitant to say. Uh, I guess I'll show it to you guys. Let's see if we can get it to show. See how it's kind of metallic, uh, not metallic, yeah, kind of, or, or pearlescent. See all the little sparkles kind of in it? On the fakes, it's just a white sticker. Whereas that um, looks like really nice paint. Okay? Sorry, this thing's a little bit dusty, guys. Spurzel locking USA tuners. And... Um, that's the guitar, everybody. It is a bolt-on. They're all bolt-ons. Maple neck, mahogany body. It sounds absolutely killer. And we've got the signed metal plate that came with the case. We don't have the original case, but we've got that plate. Um, and so, yeah, you can feel very confident you are dealing with a real, genuine ESP JH-1. It's the only one available for sale in the world, as far as I can see. And go ahead and just finger tighten these right now so we can flip this over. We'll have one more look at the front. Cool. I'll get the screwdriver here in a second, but for right now. On this, uh, very common on bolt-on guitars. I don't know if you can see it. You have a little hairline right there. And uh, on this one, too. Just, a, just in the paint, guys. Right there. Pretty standard on all bolt-ons, especially when you have a, a body design like this. Cool. You can kind of see in the paint what I was talking about earlier there if you don't get what I'm saying just shoot me a message all right guys well thanks for hanging out and watching this video with me just so you know today's an exciting day because we're gonna hit the thousand subscribers we're at like 996 and I'm pretty sure four more people will sign up today so thanks, guys. It's pretty exciting. We'll have to throw a little party once we do hit the 1,000 mark. Hopefully, uh, in one of the other guitars I'm doing today, I'll be able to say that, that we made it. But quarter million views, 1,000 subscribers. You guys have been tremendous. If you want to buy this guitar, it's for sale on our website, EssexRecordingStudios.com. Hosted by our good buddies, Reverb.com. And uh, if you want to record with this bad boy, well, it's here for you. We're a residential studio. We've got bedrooms upstairs. Come on over to England and let's make some badass music together, everybody. All right? Awesome. If you want to see another cool Metallica Flying V, I've got a Gibson Custom Shop aged Kirk Hammett Flying V. That thing's insane. They only made 100 of them and we've got one. So you can check that out too. We've got a lot of Metallica signature guitars, but this is very, very special. 
Uh, it's the first one we've ever had, and I'm pretty sure it's the last one we'll ever have because I've never seen one available for sale, and I've been searching in the search results and everything else like that, and the last one that came up was over a year ago. Cool. All right, guys. I'll see you soon in another video coming right up. Bye.